Hi folks, uh, it's Dr. Rob Sivers. Um, this is kind of part two of a video that we just released, the, the previous one, where Daryl Merriman sent me a question about why do certain cells require glucose? Well, the interesting thing is that evolutionarily and physiologically, the human body is not designed to use sugar as a primary fuel source. In other words, the human body does not rely on the consumption of sugar the release of sugar into the bloodstream, and then the use of that sugar. In fact, that very process, which has become the modern dominant era form of feeding, is actually most closely associated with all of the metabolic harm. Because when glucose clearance is supply-driven, when we're oversupplying it, both in terms of carbohydrates and excessive protein, the storage hormones involved, when they're up all the time, cause havoc in the human body. So... Ordinarily, the way the human body should work is we eat food, whether that's fat, protein, or carbohydrates, and we should be storing that. And the primary stores are a little bit of glycogen in the liver and fat in the fat cells, which is the big store. And then between meals, we should be using that. So the majority of the time for humans and, and for most carnivorous or carnivore-based animals is utilization time where we're using our internal stores and we're not eating. That's what, kind of what makes us human, except in the modern era, we're eating continuously. So the, what the human body does is when we eat, it stores that food. A little bit of glycogen, mostly fat. And then between meals, we use those stores up, primarily fat. That is the healthy part. In the modern era, where we're eating continuously, we are not using our stores. We're using our incoming GI-based foods, and that disrupts and harms the entire system. So the majority of cells in the human body should be able to use mostly fat and occasionally glucose for certain functions. There are a few pure glucose using, uh, uh, using cells, but the glucose primarily should come from glycogen from the liver. And if you look at, the, uh, at, at our evolution over time, there are several molecules now which we demonize that were held in high precious esteem. Okay, The first one is sugar. Because sugar was very rare, and sugar was a very precious commodity, not for its nutritional value, but because it tastes great. So if you go back to the Dark Ages in Europe, sugar, honey, fruit was a special delicacy. Delicacy that was rarely available to common folks, and it had a very high price tag on it. But that was because it was a pleasure drug now, this is before Christopher Columbus and before sugar cane and before tobacco. But the same thing with tobacco. Early on, tobacco was this high-priced, desperately desired thing that was used occasionally by people in Europe. Now, I know I'm being a bit subjective there, but people in Europe, because they didn't have access to it. And it was only after Chris Columbus that tobacco came to Europe. So it was a precious commodity that didn't cause harm because the supply wasn't significant. And regular folks, poorer folks and regular folks, didn't have access because of a supply-demand thing. Now everybody smokes in Europe because of the oversupply. And that's where the harm comes from. Exactly the same with sugar. Sugar was this precious commodity, but after the uh, mechanical food preparation evolution of the last 50 to 70 years, it's now ubiquitously available. That pathway being led in this country, but also true now everywhere in the world where sugar abundance, chronic excessive supply of sugar, is used by people as a drug. However, there are a few other substances that are vitally necessary, vitally necessary for health, for the healthy human condition that we've now demonized. Starting with salt. You know, there's a southern expression that I heard where they they talk about something called a lick log. What's a lick log? And, and where I grew up in Africa, we used to put out salt blocks. But a lick log is where you take chunks of salt and you embed it in a tree and the cattle and the horses and the sheep go up and they have to lick the salt out of there because everybody knew that salt and electrolytes was, is, is vital, vital to herded animals. And even in Africa, salt pans were essential to the herding group. So we knew that salt was a vital commodity. And even in Africa, the hunter-gatherers carry rock salt with them. 
particularly to manage hydration, because hydration is not about water, it's about salt. So salt was an incredibly precious commodity. We had salt mines, we had salt caravans. Salt was often currency 500, 600 years ago. So we knew about salt. We, we loved salt. We demanded salt. And the human body is physiologically equipped to handle excess salt. But in the modern era, salt's bad for you. Stop salting your food. Cut back on your salt. You can hardly go into a restaurant now where there's salt on the table. You have to ask and request salt from the waiter. And then they frown at you and look like you're going to have a heart attack. So they kind of bring the defibrillator and put it next to you. That's how upside down we've become because of sugar. The second commodity that is celebrated, celebrated by older, more established, more traditional populations, and where I come from in Africa, some of the tribal communities, whether they become urbanized or not, there's the tribal root, and that is fat. And we use fat for everything. We use fat as lip balm. We smear it with okra on our skin to, as an adornment. We use it uh, uh, to take up dry skin. Fat is an excellent uh, uh, um, uh, skin remedy. We savor eating fat. We chased and we loved fat. What do we do? We fatten up our cows. We fatten up our sheep. In the Bible, we didn't, we didn't slaughter the skinny little runt goat, the little green runt goat or runt sheep. No, we slaughtered the fattest one. We knew the value of, we celebrated and we chased fat for all parts of our life. Now it's bad for us. Now you can't eat fat. Avoid fat. Low fat, low fat. Everything's lean. We are so upside down in how we've screwed over our own evolution. Because for hundreds of thousands of years, we've used salt. We most likely came out of a salt environment called the sea way, way back. But we, we are adapted to salt. We're adapted to fat. Our entire biology, our entire evolution functions with fat as a foundation, with salt as a foundation. And of everything we've demonized, it's salt and fat in the modern era. How screwed up is that? And all to accommodate our addiction to a drug called sugar. Think that one through, folks. So when you look at the human body, you look at inflammation, you look at obesity, you look at all the diseases that occur, it's dysregulation, dysregulation of the energy supply system and the hormones that regulate that within the body. We have transferred the focus of energy from the quarterback organ called the, called the liver to the gut. And the liver is now a defender against what the gut is supplying rather than the supply organ for the entire body. And when the liver is struggling, the entire body gets negatively affected because all the hormones that the liver requires to manage energy, to manage nutrition, are screwed up and they are quarterback hormones that affect the entire body. So the screw-up is a massive transformation, a 180-degree shift from celebrating fat and salt to demonizing fat and salt because of sugar. And sugar was always celebrated because it was scarce and it tasted good, not because it was necessary for biology. Whereas fat and salt were always necessary for healthy biology. Think that one through, folks. And until we reverse that trend, we're going to get sicker and sicker and sicker as a species because our evolution cannot cope with this massive 180 degree change. And that as a physician more than anything else is what we treat. But we treat it with pills, we treat it with drugs. We don't treat it at a fundamental foundational level. And remember this, for all of those on the internet in the low carb space, the word that I haven't mentioned the word I have not mentioned yet is protein. Why? Leave that in your comments. Why have I not mentioned the word protein? Leave that in your comments. And by the way, the hunter-gatherers drank a lot of milk. Milk is a staple for those hunter-gatherers. It's goats, sheep, sheep, bleh, goats, sheep, yaks, cows, reindeer, 
Milk is essential to those communities. High fat. Hmm. Now we demonize it. Now everything's skim milk. So think that one through. Why did I have this discussion? Why did I not mention protein? I am the Carbon Addiction Doc. Leave comments. Let's discuss this.